Virgin Galactic has launched its first commercial flight to the edge of space. The 90-minute mission took off from New Mexico and flew 80 kilometers above sea level. The team of Italian researchers on board saw the Earth's curvature and experienced weightlessness. Virgin wants to start regular commercial flights in a new era of space tourism. Hundreds of enthusiasts have paid up to $450,000 for tickets. And these kinds of milestones are best discussed with Keith Cowing. He's the editor of SpaceRef.com and joins us from Washington. Keith, good to see you again. Now, Virgin Galactic yes. is joining the commercial space travel game a lot later than planned. What took them so long? Well, you know, the phrase you hear a lot of people use, and I'll throw it out, is space is hard. They're doing something for the first time, and then they're trying to do it a second and third time. And they, the idea is that it'll be as routine as getting on a jet airplane. And that took a lot longer than I think all of us remember. So uh, they're getting there. The fact is this flight took off exactly when it was supposed to. They did what they did. They all smiled. They landed and they got out. So, you know, check the box. There are several players in the game of commercial space travel, though. What sets Virgin Galactic apart? Well, it has to do with several things. One is just the approach to how they built their their vehicle. It's an airplane and it does something interesting as it comes back in, but it re relies on aerodynamics for the bulk and it had, uh, of its flight and has two pilots. Whereas Blue Origin has a capsule which is pretty much designed to go up on its own with no participation by the crew and just land all by itself. And then uh, SpaceX has a capsule that can kind of do the same. So it's a, it's a different approach to things. Virgin Galactic had this idea that they could eventually just land the big plane any, at any airport, put on some paying passengers, take them to space, they get off, they go home, and they go to another airport. So it's just a, a, a different approach to the same thing. And talking about paying passengers, the tickets are going at around half a million dollars a pop. How long before people like you, know, you and I could enjoy one of these flights? Well, I don't know. I'd have to talk to your producer about your travel <laughs> budget. I mean, I... I've done the centrifuge training, and I got the centif for a flight. I've done it, and you, and you could do it easily. I've done the weightless and stuff. Anybody can do that. So it's pretty. It's not a physical thing. It's just a matter of resources and whether you have that kind of money lying around. And uh, you know, it's a personal choice. But it will get cheaper. It's just like the nature of these things. The more companies that do this, the more efficiently they do it. The cheaper it'll get, and hopefully it'll follow the airline model. At least the better parts of it, where. It's cheap to fly. I don't know about the service or the food, but, you know, that's sort of the ultimate goal. All right. Well, I'll see you in space then. Keith Cowing, editor of SpaceRef.com. Many thanks for your take. As always, great speaking to you. Bye-bye.